Right. Uh, questions on an answer to an urgent question asked in the House of Commons on Monday, the 17th of May, on recent anti-Semitic attacks across the UK. I call Baroness Hayter of Kentish Town. My Jewish 97-year-old Aunt Rose lives in St John's Wood. I never imagined I would see such scenes on her street. As Simon Wiesenstahl said, for evil to flourish, it only requires good men to do nothing. And Pastor Nimola wrote, first they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Does the minister agree that each and every one of us must stand up to and speak out against what we saw at the weekend? Minister, Lord Greenhouch. I completely agree that we must stand in solidarity with British Jews. The events that we saw in the past week were absolutely abhorrent, and I'm pleased that the police acted swiftly to arrest four individuals for that particular offence of driving up and down the Finchley Road. But equally, there was the violent attack on Rabbi Rafi, Rafi Goodwin in Chigwell, and I'm pleased to say the latest news is that the police have arrested two individuals concerning that particular incident. Baroness Ludford. My Lords, it is poignant that today's exchange on anti-Semitism coincides with the important Jewish festival of Shavuot. And this has kept some of our colleagues um, away from this, um, this event. One of the examples that accompanies the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism is, quote, holding Jews collectively responsible for actions of the state of Israel. So can the noble Lord the Minister tell me what steps is the government taking to ensure that all public and private bo bodies adopt not only the definition, but also the examples and can the government stress at every opportunity that the supposedly pro-Palestinian demonstrations of recent days have actually been pro-Hamas, not in support of the Palestinian people? Sir? My Lords, this government is very proud of the fact that they were the first adopters of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition, and we're working very hard to ensure that that's fully embedded uh, across our universities, local councils, and, of course, every single member of Parliament, bar one, has also signed up uh, to, to that particular definition. And it is important that we take that forward. And we will continue to work very hard to ensure that, uh, that we tackle anti-Semitism wherever we see it. Lord Pickles. My Lords, I draw attention to my entry in the Register of Interest. The Jew haters and the women uh, despising thugs who threatened murder and sexual violence onto our streets brought great shame to our nation. Within the first chance, they exposed the thin veneer between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. Does my noble friend share my sadness that many of the car convoys uh, of violence came from my native city of Bradford, a city that has a proud record of, of cooperation between the communities, not least of which in the Near Neighbour programme. Does my noble friend agree that we cannot allow the men of violence to define the relationship between communities? Would he commit to measures that combine strict policing and a strong social cohesion? We must, as our priority, remove fear from our streets. Huh? My noble friend with his experience as a leader of Bradford is absolutely right that we do need to combine that strict policing where we do more than engage and that the police act to ensure that we take the hate off our streets and, and on, online wherever it occurs. But equally that there's also that strong robust approach to social cohesion and in fact it is Bradford that pioneered the Neen Neighbours programme, something that brings uh, different communities, both the Muslim community and the Jewish community, closer together and we can learn from that. The Bishop of Manchester. Is the noble lord, uh, the minister, aware that the Union of Jewish Students have raised serious concerns that uh, Jewish students and societies are now being targeted with really quite disgusting anti-Semitic abuse due to the conflict in the Middle East? Uh, will the noble lord reassure Jewish students that the government will clamp down on all forms of campus anti-Semitism and indeed encourage all universities uh, not just to adopt but to implement the I I IHRA definition on anti-Semitism? Minister. My Lords, we are aware of this tension. The Community uh, Security Trust, the CST, has reported a massive spike in anti-Semitic incidents, but equally Tal Mama has seen a similar uh, increase of anti-Muslim 
in, uh, issues of uh, an increase of some 420 per cent in the last week. Uh, we are funding the Union of Jewish Students to do precisely that, uh, to tackle with these issues, and we want to see the full implementation, not just the adoption of the IRA definition of anti-Semitism. Lord Panic. The Jewish community will be very grateful to the Minister for what he said uh, uh, today. He, he knows that anti-Semitism is not confined to appalling attacks uh, on a rabbi in Chigwell uh, and threats to Jewish women uh, in North London. Uh, the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism to which the Minister referred a few moments ago gives as an example the applying of double standards by requiring the State of Israel uh, to behave in a way not expected of any other uh, democratic nation. Uh, would the Minister accept that there have been many examples of those double standards in the past week, uh, particularly by broadcasters, and that this more subtle form of anti-Semitism contributes to an atmosphere in which the cruder forms breed? Uh, my Lords, my right honourable friend in the other house uh, talked about how, how sometimes anti Semitism is really that subtler form of um, anti Zionism is that subtler form of anti Semitism, and we need to root out even those mo most subtler uh, forms uh, absolutely and, and ensure that we, that we take uh, these forms of anti Semitism away from both the uh, internet and also away from the streets of our, our big cities. Lord Treesman. Just a couple of days ago, and less than half a mile from my own home, that the motor convoy with loud hailers passed, calling for Jews to be killed and our daughters raped. And I know that there has been a quick response from political leaders and the police, although I must say to what effect, I don't yet know. Now, I abhor Islamophobia and I abhor anti-Semitism. No decent, safe society can live with either. I've never come across a Jewish group calling for the death or rape of Muslims, and if I did, they would find me an outspoken enemy. What discussions has the government held with the many law-abiding Muslim groups to encourage public expression of their anger and repudiation of the hatred of Jews? And what concrete additional help can be given to the Community Security Trust to enhance community protection? Minister. Um, my Lords, uh, we continue to have uh, both uh, our uh, cross-government um, working groups for, that tackle both anti-Semitism and um, anti-Muslim sentiments, and we continue to work with a number of stakeholders uh, to, uh, to, to um, address those particular challenges. Um, we also provide a substantial sub uh, degree of support for the, um, for, for the Community Security Trust um, uh, in, in the, it's 14 million this year, but it's been 65 million to date, and we'll continue to support their, 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 what they do. But they also provide important support for other minority and faith communities as well. Uh, Lord Polak has withdrawn, so I call Lord Carlisle of Berrieu. Um, the uh, remarks by the noble Lord, Lord Greenhalgh, about the speedy action by the police were extremely welcome. For the sake of Holocaust survivors like my beloved sister, and for the whole of the community, can we ensure that once prosecutions are brought, they are brought quickly and not delayed? And will the government call upon the Director of Public Prosecutions to account to the government for the speedy way in which these cases should be processed? My Lords, I, I perhaps can't talk about the specific cases, because that, but, but equally, justice delayed is justice denied, and we do need to see swift and short justice in these matters. Ms Ramsey of Cart Vale. My Lords, does the Minister understand that while all decent people in the United Kingdom uh, uh, disapprove of anti-Semitism and find it abhorrent, there is a particular resonance for the Jewish community in what was happening on the streets of London just a few days ago. And that is that in the 1930s, that's exactly the kind of thing that was proved to be pro a precursor to a Holocaust. And so would the minister agree that it behoves all of us, not just the police and the judiciary, but in this house and the other house and, in, and, and, for, and journalists to take the utmost caution in the language they use in describing events in the Middle East just now, 
so that they don't inadvertently flame the fa the, the, the flame the the fl oh, increase the end flame <laughs> the fires of anti-Semitism. Minister, my, my lords, I completely agree with those sentiments. We do need to robustly. Uh, in short, uh, uh, react and, and enforce, but equally find the right tone to cover these sorts of events. Uh, my Lords, I apologise to Baroness Eaton, but the time has now elapsed for this question.